I think our guys have bought into it more as the year's gone on, and certainly more since we started seeing the results of the sacrifice. Latrell Sprewell just picking up his second foul, which brings Marcus Camby into the game as Sprewell goes out. Eight on the clock for Dale Davis. Oh. Miller wanted the foul, no call. Dudley had it stripped away, missed right underneath by Davis. And here's Ward leading the New York break. Camby fouled by Mullen. Camby had to slow down. And he was well ahead of Charlie Ward as Larry Bird is shaking his head and saying, guys, we got to make those things inside. But he had to slow up, and that gave Mullen a chance to get in front of him and get the person. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, Larry Bird made a, uh, a big thing out of it, and, and, of course, Jeff Van Gundy responding. To LJ for three. Won't go. Rebounded by Antonio Davis, and the drought continues. Seven rebounds for Antonio already. Here's a save by Canby. Childs pushing the ball to Canby. There's the chance. There's that energy that Canby brings to the game. Crowd responds as uh, the Knicks crawl back to within two. Fine job by Chris Giles. Get the ball out of Mark Jackson's hands. Now they're trying to post uh, Kurt Thomas against Chris Mullen. Lobbing over the top. That's where Thomas is going to be most effective. Great defend Camby. Marcus Camby continues to be the most active player on the court, just as he was in game three. Taps that one home with 43 seconds left in the first quarter. Camby got a hand in on the shot by Rose. Third time, he blocks it cleanly, and New York has it. The matchup here, Camby against Reggie Miller, and they go right to it. They're trying to hide Reggie Miller so he doesn't get the third personal foul. The Knicks make him pay right away. You'll see that Reggie Miller ends up getting stuck and tries to front. No pressure on the passer. Too easy a play, a catch and a drop for Marcus Camby. The problem is that Mark Jackson could never in his entire career exert any defensive pressure. That's what been one of the knocks on Mark. When he gets up on Chris Childs, as in game three, Childs just down the lane with easy penetration. Jalen had been in Larry Brown's doghouse somewhat, and uh, <laughs> Larry Bird was the man that uh, returned him to the potential so many thought he had. Springwell, a touch pass to Camby, who is fouled. And that's the best player ball movement the Knicks have had here in the quarter and it's quick hitting plays that's going to get Marcus Camby to the free throw line and anytime you can move the ball move people then good things are going to happen you'll see the defense react Camby wide open in the slot down on the baseline and a chance for two but because of Indiana's discipline on offense and taking it to the hoop there's no transition opportunities for New York Mark Jackson is giving the ball up early against the double team and that's a great thing to do Marcus Camby. Camby hauled down the miss by Rose for his seventh rebound. Here's Houston for three. Bad looking shot. Camby had it, and he's fouled. See, that's what Marcus Camby has been doing the entire series and able to make a big save for the crowd and the Knicks who want something to happen here before the end of the quarter. Wait a second. How can you rebound this shot? This comes off like... Like a cannon shot from so far away, you can't even get a bead on that. Did you see that ball fall in Dale Davis's hand? The no guy took it away it. from he him. He was guarding his face so he wouldn't get hurt. 52% <laughs> of that third quarter to see if they can sustain it. Well, they've done a better job of moving the ball and attacking the rim. Camby. From Charlie Ward. Yo, A means <laughs> I want to get your attention. If they show, you're going to see a nice penetrating drive by Charlie Ward. And the defense come to him. Camby with two hands over the top. And that's what they want to try to do for Camby. Keep him in the slot and then let him play above the rim. That was the key to the Knicks' great comeback in game three. Indiana leading New York 69-59 with 9.46 remaining. Childs with a steal. Camby is fouled by Rose. When we went away to commercial, <laughs> the officials changed their call while we were away, giving the ball back to Indiana. Didn't matter. New York got the steal, and now Jalen Rose commits his third foul, putting Camby on the line. And, and it be is with great quickness here. Just keeps running and beautifully 
laid back by Chris Childs. Perfect execution of the two-on-one. It was that guy, Camby, who's doing all the yelling and screaming that tipped that ball free. So Camby, although his numbers aren't quite as good as they were in game three, has definitely been a factor for Van Gundy. Gets his first free throw. In game three, he's firing blanks from the arc tonight. Kurt Thomas has four fouls. And steals. Camby. Remember the trouble Indiana has closing out a game. 7.20 left. New York trying to mount a comeback down seven. Timeout New York, 7.01 showing on the clock. Marcus Camby right into the passing lane, and he'll throw it down on the other end. Nice pass by Mark Jackson. <laughs> Camby's trying to get the crowd involved in it. He might not even go to game five. Camby. How much of a factor was the emotional fatigue of New York after that draining victory in game three? He has 19 points, and so the good news for Larry Bird is you get Smiths and Miller back to the top of their game, and you're hitting on all cylinders. It seemed tonight, Tom, as if the Pacers finally played with a sense of desperation. It says that if we don't win this game, we have no chance to win that elusive championship. Now Rose and the Pacers will dribble oh, it out, oh. and Reggie Miller says, not tonight. There'll be no 3-1. Uh, 